What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do text boxes with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at text boxes for PyQt, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, we are moving right along. PyQT Thursdays. In this video, we're going to look at text boxes. So we've looked at sort of small text fields, line edit boxes. In this video, we're going to look at the large text box. And this is very cool. We can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. We can use plain text. We can use rich text. We can use HTML. We can have, you can see placeholder text. When I start typing, it disappears. We click the button, this thing changes up here. Maybe we'll change the text that shows up in the box after we click the button, all kinds of cool stuff. So let's get into it. So I've got a file called textbox.py. This is the same exact code that we looked at in the last video when we looked at spin boxes. If you didn't see that video, check the link to the playlist in the comment section below. You can also find the code for this video and all my videos in the comment section below as well. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So. We've got our label here and I changed it to say type something into the box below. So that's the only change there. And now let's come down here to where we created our spin box and let's change this to text box. So instead of calling this my spin, I'm going to call this my text. And let's come down here. We don't need to change the font, obviously. So let's comment that out. And when we put this on the screen, it's not going to be my spin. It's going to be my text. And same thing down here when we click the button and update the label. It's not going to be my spin, it's going to be my text. Now this value will change as well. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. So let's come up here and we're going to keep self, but we're going to get rid of all the rest of these attributes. And now this is obviously not going to be a Q spin box. This will be a Q text edit box, right? So, okay. Now there's a bunch of different attributes that we can play with here and we're going to look at all of them, but right off the bat, we'll make it very simple with the, just the bare minimum stuff. So let's go, we start out with line wrap mode. Right. And notice this is a lowercase L. I know it kind of looks like a, an uppercase L, but Sublime just does that. That's the default font for Sublime. But we got line wrap mode. Now this is going to be a QTW. Remember, that's because up here we're importing our widgets as QTW, right? So a QTW dot Q text edit dot fixed column width. Right. So uh, don't think about this line too much. It's just we want our columns to be fixed. And we're going to define how many columns and how wide this thing's going to be in just a minute. But that's just sort of the first line you always have. Next, we have line wrap column or width. And we can set this equal to any number. And this sets the width of the text inside of the text box. It doesn't change the size of the text box. It changes how far over the text will go as you're typing before it line wraps it to the next line. So 50 characters over, and then it'll line wrap to the next line. So we'll play with that number and uh, see what changing it does in just a minute. So again, line is lowercase, uppercase W, uppercase C, uppercase O, uppercase width. Sometimes people forget this little or in here. So they just type line wrap column width. It's easy to do that. But this is line wrap column or width. So just sort of keep that in mind. So next we have placeholder text and we can set this any equal to anything and I'm just going to say hello world. And now this is placeholder text. It's just sort of grayed out text that's in our text box by default. And then as soon as we start typing, it disappears. Now that's not to be confused with regular text and we can put regular text in there by default if we want. This is different. This is just placeholder text. So, okay, there we go there. And finally, we can have read only and let's set that equal to false. So let's say you've got text in your text box, you don't want people to be able to change that text or type their own text in, you could set read only to true and then it would sort of lock the text box, but we'll leave it to false or you could just leave this whole thing off by default. It's read only false. So you don't have to type this in, but I thought I'd show it to you anyway, because you know, it's good to know. So let's go ahead and save this and let's come down here to when we press the button and we want to take whatever we typed in the text box and put it in the label above. So we've got here, you picked my text dot value. Instead of dot value, we want to plain text. We want to convert this to plain text. So lowercase t, uppercase p, uppercase t there. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it to see if that looks okay. So we want python textbox.py. 
And when we do, okay, we get our little text box. You can see the placeholder text. Notice as soon as I start to type, I type John, the placeholder text disappears. So now we type John Elder, we click the button. It says you picked John Elder. Maybe we'll change you picked to you typed. And really cool. So what happens if we click this button and we want something to appear here like you clicked the button? But we can do that too. So let's look at that real quick. So pull our code back up. And here we just remember our text box is called my underscore text. So here we would just go my underscore text dot set plain text. And this is a function. Now we could just pass in anything we want. So we could type you pressed the button or something, right? And instead of you picked, let's type you typed. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that looks okay. So I'm just going to type in John, click this, you type John, and then in the text box, now it says you press the button. So that's how you can set things in the text box programmatically at any time, not just when you click a button. You just set the name of the text box to set plain text and then just pass in whatever text. Okay, so what else can we do with this text box? There are all kinds of fun stuff we can do. We can for instance, accept rich text. And let's set that equal to true. So rich text is sort of like a, a Word document that has formatting, sort of like bold text, italic text, colored text, things like that. So, so for instance, I can pull up a quick Microsoft Word document and you can see here I have, this is bold text and maybe color text. And if I kind of highlight this and let's change this color to red, now, if I copy this and we run our code again and I start to type hello, dot, dot, dot. And then if I paste in that other text, boom, you can see it's bold and red. So rich text, very cool. If we close this, come back over to our code. So if we set this to false, if I save this, run our code again. And again, try and paste that stuff in, you notice the formatting is gone. It's not bold and it's not red anymore because we're not allowing rich text. So that's one thing that's pretty cool. If we want something to appear as text by default when it starts, right? We've got this placeholder text, but that's placeholder text. It disappears as soon as you start typing. If we want actual text to be in the text box that doesn't disappear when you start typing, we can do that as well by just calling plain text and set this to this is real text. And we need a comma, we set it to whatever you want. So now if we save this and run it, we see this is real text, but this is actual text. If I start to type now, it doesn't actually disappear like the placeholder text did. So that text is just in there. So, okay, that's cool. That's how you do that. What else can we do? I'm gonna go ahead and comment out the plain text thing because I don't really need that in there. We can also use HTML in this text box, which is really cool. All we have to do is type in HTML and then set it equal to whatever we want. So if we want, for instance, an H1 tag, big header text, right? H1, we could do that, save this, run it. Now that text is gonna appear and it's gonna be big and bold and you know header text. Notice we have not set our thing to rich text mode. This is not rich text, this is HTML text, we're doing all this with HTML. So we can do, you know, all the other normal things you would do with HTML. For instance, if we wanted to make this italic, we could use the EM tag for emphasis, all right? Save this, run it. You can see now it's sort of italic, really cool. So you can really sort of play around with all of these things. See exactly what you could do HTML wise. You can see now it's, it's centered. So very, very cool. So, okay, that's HTML. I also mentioned earlier that we could change this width. And what did I mean by that? So let's comment out the HTML and let's just save this and run it again. Let me show you this. So we're typing, we're typing, I'm just holding it down. We go to 50 characters, boom, it, it knocks it over down into the next row. See, it's wrapping the text at 50 characters. So that's right under the I and the N. So just sort of remember that. Let's change this to, let's say, I don't know, 20 or so. If we save this and run it. 
remember it went to like right here before. Now it just goes to there, 20. It went all the way to the I earlier with 50. So just sort of keep that in mind. If you want it to go, you know, obviously much larger, you could change it to much larger, say 100. And instead of stopping at the eye, now it goes all the way over. Very cool. So maybe I want to split the difference a little bit. So 75. Save this. Run it. I'm going to be doing it like right about here or so. Yeah, right there. And whatever you like. And that's obviously totally up to you. Click this. Whoa. <laughs> So that's pretty much all there is to the text edit box, the Q text edit widget. Remember plain text, HTML or rich text. We set the line wrap mode usually always to fixed column width. And then here you can change the, the size of the text, how far over it types before you have a line wrap. And you can also have or not have placeholder text. And also this read only false if we change this to true really quickly. And then maybe we change this back to the plain text. If we save this and run it, You'll see it says this is real text and I click on here. It won't even let me click on it and put the little cursor. I'm typing on the keyboard. You can't tell, but I am and nothing's happening. So even if I highlight this completely and then type, it won't let me because read only is set to true. And so you can't type in it. So you might imagine it's pretty easy to make a really cool text editor with this thing because it already has rich text. It already has HTML. It already has all the formatting stuff you could want. So we might do that in the future, make a little text editor. It might be fun. Uh, but that'll be, you know, a few videos into the future. For now, we're going to continue learning the basic widgets and stuff, but we're almost through with the basic widgets. We've done most of the main ones that you're going to ever want to play with. Not all of them, obviously, but uh, a good chunk of them and uh, come along pretty good. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.